Hi everyone, welcome to a very different Broken Meeple video. Yes, I said I wasn't going to do the Accessorize series anymore, and that still remains true. I'm not doing a whole series based on it, but occasionally I do get sent some inserts by Folded Space and other providers, and I kind of like want to talk about them in some way. Now, of course, the camera is not focused on my face for two reasons. Firstly, I figured the best way for me to show off all these inserts that I've got here was to just simply have them open up for you to view. And secondly, because this has been filmed literally five Five days I think before lockdown is going to release things like hairdressers for us I still look like you know the werewolf male or the bride so I kind of like I'm kind of happy to not have my face on camera at this per point in time but basically what I'm gonna do is that I've got a bunch of games here some you can see in shot some you can't so there'll be some surprises and some not but I've been sent a ton of these uh, in fact I think Spirit Island is the one that I bought myself in advance but the rest of these have all been provided very kindly by Folded Space who are probably my go-to source of inserts now they essentially use this kind of I uh, forget what they call it but you know it's just very soft polyfoam stuff and you just put it together glue it together it will hold reasonably sturdy just don't like you know, crush it with your hands or anything and it does the job nicely now it takes a little while to assemble these you know it can be a fair chunk of your evening if you've bought a bunch of these but they do the job very nicely. They're very easy to put together. There's no like really, really fiddly bits in that apart from like sometimes they have like a little doorway system on them. They can be a little bit fiddly. But other than that, these inserts really do the job. And I'm just going to go through a bunch of them here, show you what they look like, show them how you store them in the box. And, you know, you can make up your own decisions as to whether they're right for you. So let's get rid of that and move on to something very simple to begin with. We're going to start with marvel champions as well as the expansion rise of the red skull so this is a pretty straightforward insert that they use i mean there's not a huge amount to it in terms of complexity but i sort of evenly lay out all the what you call it like little slips that you get in the hero packs on top and essentially what i do is after taking all of those out we are left with the insert as shown so this one has basically one giant row for those cards and i use dividers off uh, bgg so um if i can i'll get a link in the description but to be honest use whichever dividers you like i personally laminate dividers for all of these lcgs i do it's a lot of work but it's necessary to keep things organized so the time the dial sits very neatly on top of there in a kind of a little slot so it doesn't protrude You've then got some very basic little trays for tokens, and there's three of them in the back, so I'm not going to get them all out, but there's one here for fret tokens, there's one in there for damage tokens, and there's this one for kind of any other token, really. Dials fit very nicely in the front of one of these trays, and then after that, it's just a couple of dividers, and you use whatever you kind of system you want, really, for organizing your cards. So, for example, I've got pretty much every hero I have in this line, I've then decided to put the majority of the villains here and here with some of the basic core set encounters and it does the job. It essentially takes away some of that unnecessary plastic that you used in the normal sort of insert because that was quite bulky red plastic and it doesn't allow for a lot of extra space. Now I sleeve all my cards. Every card in here is sleeved so that I don't have to worry about it when I create a deck. So even though you might think this isn't a lot of cards. Some of them are currently in decks, and some of them are in this uh, other box, the Rise of Red Skull, which I'll get out in a minute. That's why it doesn't look like there's a lot of space taken up. But if you don't sleeve your cards, you're going to fit a ton in here. It's very easy to put together, one of the easiest inserts, one of the quickest inserts, and you know, very cheap as well. If you're into your Marvel Champions, then I recommend doing this, because then it means you won't have to expend on a much more expensive like crate solution. But while we're looking at this particular set, as I just pop these back in here, I'll sort out the uh, slips and that in a minute, but let's just put that to like one side for now and bring out the Rise of Red Skull. So this is a very similar setup, but probably even more simplistic than the other one. This one is literally just a, effectively like a grid matrix of the dividers, that's it. The rest of it is just cards. So this is pretty much as simple bare bones as you can get card storage. And again, this is sleeved. So it's holding this many cards sleeved. If it was unsleeved, it would hold a lot more. 
But here I've basically put like the protection, aggression, uh, justice, basic, uh, leadership cards as well as some of the encounter cards from the Hydra set. Uh, Kang is in here I believe as well. And so, you know, it's holding everything pretty neatly. I mean, I've pretty much run out of space in this insert and in a sense the other insert. So, any more content and I would need to put it in a different box. Which, considering that Galaxy's Most Wanted is sitting on the chair over there, that's not a problem because I can just buy this same insert because it's compatible with all the future expansions now. The one for Rise of Skull will work with Galaxy's Most Wanted. I'll just get one of these inserts, pop it in Galaxy's Most Wanted, and use that as another card storage. So, uh, you know, pretty straightforward, easy going. It does what it says on the tin, really. It keeps your cards a bit more organized than it would be with the plastic insert. It's up to you whether you think that this is, like, the way to go, because it's not like the plastic insert was bad, but I was starting to run out of space for cards, and this kind of just, like, maximizes the space that you have inside this box, so that things are a little bit simpler. So, yep, that is Marvel Champions with Red Skull. I'm going to pop those out the way now. Let's move that over there and put Red Skull over here. Right. Now we're going to move on to Pandemic Iberia. Now this insert works with any of these Finbox Pandemic games. So Pandemic Iberia, Pandemic Rising Tide, probably Call of Cthulhu as well, the base set Pandemic. It works with the board. It's basically a universal insert. Now the insert works well, but this is one of those inserts where I'm going to be honest, I don't think it's overly necessary. You know, there's only so much you have to bag in a game of Pandemic, but that's not to say the insert doesn't work, but... In terms of like the change from using it without this insert and with, it's not a drastic difference. But here you'll be able to see what I've done. So it's a very easy insert to put together. There's not a lot to it. It's basically just this square grid thing, which I don't advise picking up by the middle if you haven't glued it down. And a few trays for basically whatever tokens you want to use. It varies based on you know which set you have as to what tokens will go where. And annoyingly, for some reason, it tells you to put the cubes in the top of this one, but it only gives you three compartments. So one compartment's got blue and black, and then one's got red, one's got yellow. That's kind of weird. I mean, that's just an aesthetic irritation to me, but it's no big deal. It's still easy enough to set up because you've got to get them all out anyway. And then you can separate the cards as you like. So there's a huge space here for cards that I didn't need. So I've just put like the uh, expansion stuff in there. When I say expansion with Iberia, I mean like the variant cards. But then I've got the infection cards here. I've got the player cards there. I've got the epidemic and event cards here that I can shuffle in. And then this is just simply... Oh, oh, oh God. yeah, and this is the problem. I don't glue the middle part of these down. I only glue the outside, so I've got to remember not to pick these up by the middle because that usually results in a terror. But there you go. Pretty straight... Oh. <laughs> and funny enough, that type of... Oh, no, that was a... That was actually a spare thing. I didn't actually need that, so we'll, uh, we'll edit that. No, we won't. But as you can say... Holds the tokens, and that's pretty much all it needs to do. There's nothing else really in here that's particularly important. And as you can see, it's not like it was difficult to set the game up originally, so what's the big deal, really? I'm going to pop that back in there. So, yeah, Pandemic Iberia does the job. It's neat. It's nice and condensed. It will hold it during transit, but don't like feel like this is a must-buy insert. This is kind of like you really want to pimp up your copy of Pandemic, and like I say, this is the one Pandemic I will keep in the collection. You know, I, I'm kind of burnt out a bit on the whole Pandemic thing. You know, I've played the Legacy games great, but if I was to own one Pandemic game, it would be this one without a shadow of a doubt. So this is the one that I figured it would be good to pimp up a little bit. All right, next up, let's go with, let's go with Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders, second edition. So this is based for the second edition version of the game. Just pull it off. So I always keep the instructions for any slightly more complicated ones in the box. I highly recommend you do that as well, because it just helps you to remember what you need to do. And then we get these uh, bits out. So this is like rules references. This insert is designed to host all the expansions that have come out for second edition only. So this can handle the base set. It can handle our cities. It can handle leaders, and supposedly can also handle Armada. Now, I don't have Armada, because when I was deciding what to do with my first edition set before I got this, I was like, well, I love the Babel expansion, but nobody ever wants to play it. 
And Armada I tried, but I just think it's a little bit too much to add on. It only works with the base game alone, and using it with cities and leaders was a little bit fiddly. So I thought, no, I was going to build this as my quintessential Seven Wonders. And that was going to be cities, leaders, base, that's it. No Armada. So I've actually got some spare trays in here because of the fact that I don't use Armada. So there is room in here for the ships and the boards and that that use an Armada. And there's even room in here for me to put the uh, coins that I'm not using because essentially most of what this insert is, is slots for the cards. So there's individual slots where I can put like the level one cards, the level two cards, the level three cards, the leader cards, the uh, black cards from leaders. And these you can just organize how you see fit and then this one I'm using as a pouch box for the metal coins but if I didn't have that I would simply use it for armada cards. Now because I don't need this to go here where it normally would I've got a bag for the basic money. I, I, I don't want to chuck it away because it may still come in useful but basically I use the metal coins so I've got the pouch bag here but here I have the metal coin boxes, so I'm going to pull those out just a sec, here we go. Two separate boxes with, now the only annoyance with this insert is that you kind of have to put these little legs on it, you might be able to see their legs at the bottom, in order for it to prop up, otherwise you have too much space in the box. Now, the instructions specifically say that you can take these feet off when future content comes out, so that you don't need all the extra space. So, I mean, yeah, you can just pull them off at that point, but for now, you gotta put them on, it's a bit fiddly. It's the one annoyance I had with putting this insert together. It was just a time sink. But, as you can see, that is the metal coin. So it holds the set of metal coins nicely in two separate trays. They fit just fine. So if you've done what I've done and pimped up your copy of Seven Wonders like a lot, then you'll be pleased to know that it works with the money. Aside from that, these bits in the middle just hold the tokens. So you've got uh, the, the victory, sorry, the defeat tokens here. And then in a tray below, I've got the military victory tokens. And there's a tray underneath there, which you might not be able to see that is empty because I don't have Armada. So if you don't have all the expansions, there is a little bit of wasted space in here. But in the, at the end of the day, it does make for a much cleaner setup because the cards can be separated, which is kind of the main thing you want to do, and you don't want to bag these up all the time. But I like the fact that I can get the metal coins in here separated and allocate half to one side of the table and half to the other. All the score pads fit in that little cubby hole there. All the boards are underneath this. So, you know, each one of them fits from both expansions and it will fit your Armada ones in there as well. And so all I do on top is I basically just cherry pick how I want the various instruction manuals to go in. So I usually like sandwich a few in there and then ones that are too big for the hole, I just sort of put on top, layer that, put the instructions in and away you go. So I like this insert and certainly if you have both, sorry, all three expansions to Seven Wonders, I highly recommend grabbing it and it will just make life a bit easier having to bag up all the different expansions, whether you're using them separately or not. Personally, like I say, this is my way to play Seven Wonders. I don't think I'll ever buy Armada for this. I'm happy with Leaders and Cities. I think that was as good as Seven Wonders ever got, even though I do have a soft spot for Babel, but nobody else did. So I had to give that one away. All right, next up, uh, let's go with, let's go with Spirit Island. Now this one wasn't actually supplied to be by Folded Space. Had I not purchased this in advance, I would have done, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I'd already bought this. But I figured if I'm gonna do a video talking about a bunch of these inserts, I probably should talk about this one as well. So Spirit Island, this is a game new in my collection. In fact, there's a video coming out soon as to why it's in my collection now, as opposed to a review. But this is a very good insert, really, really good one, because this holds not only Spirit Island, but also Spirit Island, Branch and Claw. It will, of course, not hold Jagged Earth, and if you thought that you could get all of them in one box, you are a fool. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sorry, but with the amount of content in Jagged Earth, I don't think you could come up with a decent system to get it all in one box. But the insert is universal between this and Jagged Earth, because Jagged Earth, I think, comes in a similar size box. So all you do is buy another copy of the insert and put it in the Jagged Earth box and store the Jagged Earth stuff, which I intend to do when eventually I'll ever be able to get hold of a Jagged Earth copy. But here, you put the map tiles on top, boards, boards slot in the slots very nicely, instructions, always worth having them. And then, you know, you can put the things like the 
where we've got the scenarios and the various adversary stuff. The other little tiles, nice and easy. There's your spirit boards and you can sort of stick your finger in there and pull a few out as needed. But the main thing is that it holds a lot of the tokens and the cards very, very neatly, as you can see. I mean, the the, the blight tokens, the fear tokens, the Dahan, the like little scenario bubbles, the cards. So major power can have its own slot. Minor powers can have their own slot. Uh, this one is the, what's this one? This is the uh, spirit specific cards in there. Uh, this one is the fear cards as well as the player aids and stuff like that they're all in there so and then of course you're wondering well hang on there's a lot more tokens than that well if i can get all the spirit boards out there we go look at that nice so all the little explorers in that little tray there uh the mini cards the what you call them the the ravage cards i guess whatever they're called you know they're in the bottom and then here player pieces, and all the tokens that Branch and Claw gave. This is real nice, neat. You just literally pull out the tray, and there you go. You've got all the tokens you ever need at your disposal. This makes setup for Spirit Island so much easier. I actually, I've, I've seen people set this game up without an insert, right? And it's like, bag this, bag this, bag this, bag this, bag this. It's like, oh my God, it's an absolute nightmare. I refused to even play this game until I got the insert in it. The game arrived uh, a couple of days after I got the insert and I was adamant, I'm not even gonna play this solo until I've got the insert created because I refuse to set it up in that same way again. Well, I'm glad I made that decision because, wow, this definitely did make life a lot easier. And all I've got to do is just whoop, put some stuff in there, put the Scenario sheets there. Whoop. Nope, that goes on top as I get it right. So, nice and easy. Whoop. Nothing there. Rule box on top. And we're in a good position, box fart and all. So, yep. Spirit Island, definitely an insert to consider. Highly recommend this one if you are a Spirit Island fan and you've got the Branch and Claw expansion. And then when you get Jagged Earth, consider it for that box as well. I know I will be. But yeah, you definitely want to look into this one. All right. Let's take another one that I think is almost pretty much essential. Civilization A New Dawn. This Fantasy Flight title is certainly... Not without its fair share of cards and pieces, as you might know, and this also has the Terra Incognita expansion in it. So it's got the instructions in there. Rule books for both sit on top very nicely. And yeah, you can see why this game needs an insert. Look at that, and that's just the top layer. Wow, that's insane. And I'm also gonna give props to this. This is the most innovative design I've seen from Folded Space because, firstly, as you can see, there's a lot of separation pieces wise you need for this. I mean, there are two separate trays for resources and the loot tokens. You've got a tray for every player color with their miniatures, the uh, uh, from the expansion, the district tokens, their control tokens, their governments from the expansion, their little cards, the diplomacy cards, their big uh, tech cards, their dial. So you've got to get all of that in there. And that takes up a fair amount of space as it is. But, you know, being able to simply just go, there's my tray, give it to the player, done. There's my tray, give it to the player, done. And the same for all of these. There's another one. Now the fifth player is done slightly differently. The fifth player is kind of done by two separate trays here. So down here I've got two separate little mini trays for the fifth player. That's a slight annoyance, but to be honest, I'm never gonna play this with five players anyway. So as long as nobody wants to be purple, I just leave the trays in the box, not a problem. But for up to four players that I'm willing to do, then there you go. Four players, nice and easy. But look at this. Look at that down there. Everything's at an angle. It's like, huh, what gives? Everything's twisted that way. And that is really cool. So you've got some, because the thing is, you have got the focus rolls in here. Whoop, there's another tray for spare tokens and cards. But you've got those focus rows here and they're longer in the expansion and the only way they will fit in the box is from corner to corner. You cannot get them in the box in any other way, shape or form. So there is a, you basically put them in the middle of the box and then 
certain trays like the wonder tiles and the wonder things here the uh, natural wonders the barbarian tokens the actual uh, faction cards you can have are rotated and set alongside them at the bottom of the box but because they are there's not a huge amount of room for them to go they're not going to slide around like crazy and it's just really ingenious and then what you do is you put the the board tiles in a space over here they stack on top of each other because they're all the same shape and you just leave them like that this is a bag of the redundant components uh, that the expansion replaces because the expansion says replace certain cards and you don't need these anymore and i basically bagged them all up and it com comfortably oops, better if i do it the other way up there you go it comfortably sits on top of that pile of tokens there and doesn't intrude with the insert and then everything is just a pull-out tray. It's a really, really good insert. I mean, this will improve the setup time for this game like tenfold, honestly. And I love how they got around the focus row bit at the bottom there because I thought, how are you going to manage that? That just seems like it's like going to impede on any way of making a good insert. And I had an E-Raptor insert in this one before, and it struggled a bit with... You know, it could only do the base set components. It couldn't really handle the expansion that well. This one, though, handles everything. All nice and neat. Expansion rule books, everything on top. Sits flush, doesn't even, you know, even sit above the lid. It is a wonderful insert. This is hands down a must buy. I, as much as I say Spirit Island is a must buy with that insert, this is a must buy. You've got civilization with the expansion and you haven't got an insert, you are just making life harder for yourself. And finally, Lost Ruins of Arnak. This is one of the newest ones they've done alongside Civilization. One of my favorite games, certainly my favorite out of 2020. Sorry Dune Imperium fans, it's just the way it is. But this one has a great insert as well. Uh, although it wasn't too bad to set up before with baggies, but this is still an improvement. The boards kind of just sit on top as you can. So the big board and annoyingly the little sideboard has to be kind of separate and just not really go in a slot. But oh well, you know, minor quibbles. But here, pretty straightforward insert when you get down to the nitty gritty of it. So your player boards sit in this bit by themselves. So we want to oop, pull them out here. And what there is, is there's essentially a platform bit underneath which does nothing except for prop up the boards. So you've actually got extra space down there. If they were to throw an expansion into this and it wasn't too much, uh, ugh, shall we say too much in the component side of things, you could fit some stuff underneath the boards. So there is room for future growth here, potentially. It depends what Check Game Editions does. But everything else is pretty bare bones straightforward, to be perfectly honest. I mean, you have trays, you have like big long trays to hold the cards and the people. There's another one below there for fear cards and the sort of starting player cards. You've then got individual trays for the tokens. So there's one for jewels, there's one for coins, there's one for compasses, there's one for arrowheads and etc. And they all stack in very nicely. Uh, this one here holds the solo tiles, and that's the solo tiles from the main game. If you've print and played the uh, the revised tiles, then you'll have to like swap them in, or to be honest, put them in there, put them in there. Like I said, you know, it's easy enough to fit them in, but the solo is kept separate from the multiplayer element, which is always good. Nice simple tray here for people. And underneath the temple tiles, so if I can tilt that a little bit more, eh, hopefully you can see the temple tiles in there. But again, everything just slots on nicely. You don't need a separate box to separate player pieces because pretty much you're just giving them a couple of meeples and a couple of little compass things. Big deal. And then you've got the various exploration tiles in their own big slot as well as the smaller ones, the guardian ones in their little slots. So, you know, different sizes that accommodate for everything. And everything just slots in. It fits sleeved cards because I have sleeved my entire uh, set of this. It's a very straightforward insert, to be perfectly honest, but I think it does make a decent difference in, you know, keeping everything nice and neat and secure. Stuff just pops on top. And then we put all these back in. So board just sits on top of everything. Everything else on top. So there is a minor bit of lift to this. That is the only thing. It doesn't quite hold it super flush but it's a pretty minor lift. I mean, there are worse lifts that I have seen with these inserts, but sadly, I think the uh, sideboard kind of just made life a little bit difficult, and so you couldn't easily 
do it from there. All right, whew, well, that's a lot of inserts, but yeah, I am a big fan of the folded space inserts. They do such a good job of condensing the space while keeping them cost effective, and that's my main thing with them. As much as I like uh, companies like E-Raptor for having solutions that don't require gluing, you know, sometimes the layout can be a little bit on the confusing side. This one, I think the layout is top notch, and they are cheap. I mean, most inserts can cost you like 50, 60 quid if you're not careful, whereas these will cost you like 10 to 15 quid from your local supplier. You know, I don't know what that will be in dollars, but they're pretty cheap inserts and they do the job nicely. The only downside with them is that you've got to glue them together. So you've got to pop them out, get them organized, glue them, let them set, put them in. It's a bit of a time sink, particularly if when you've got this many games to do. Yes, it took up a lot of my day to do that during my time off, but like I say, it's worth it because now these games are much better organized and, you know, in some of these cases, like I say, out of all these ones, I think the must-buys are definitely these two. I think these two are the ones you really need to hunt down the inserts for if you have these games fully expanded. You can get by, I think, without desperately needing the Marvel Champion stuff if you feel you've got a solution already, but that depends how much of it you're collecting. And I would say that the weakest one of the lot is probably the Pandemic one. Not to say it's a bad insert, but it's just not the most, like, oh my god, I require this insert type thing. It's not the most sought after one, but it's very cheap, very cheap and very easy to put together, a very quick one. So it does have that advantage. And Arnak and Seven Wonders are pretty good as well. Standard. But these two are definitely my top scores for folded space inserts. These are must buys. So... That's it for me on this video. Hopefully it was clear to you. Hopefully you could see everything on the camera and that, and this is a little bit more condensed than trying to do one video for each insert. And at least you don't have to see my uh, hairy werewolf face at this point. So that's it for me. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple video. Take care. Remember as always, it's only a game. Don't forget to check out the description for the code for the 5% discount of zatu.co.uk. And hopefully the next time I see you outside of the recent cull and acquisition videos I've done, you might see me with a little bit less hair. So take care, see you next time.